Hello everyone, my name is Emma and this is Learn From The Past, a channel where I geek out about cool history stuff and you hopefully learn some cool history stuff. Let's get started. Today we're going to be talking about the Broadway musical that mainstreamed jazz, was instrumental in the Harlem Renaissance, and proved to the world that Black creatives had something new and important to give. In the first decade of the 20th century, Black musicals, heavily based in minstrelsy, were very popular, but the deaths of multiple huge stars all at once between 1908 and 1910 left a dearth of talent that lasted a decade. That is, until playwrights Flournoy Miller and Aubrey Lyles began acting in college. It was where they met each other and started a lifelong creative partnership. Lyricist Noble Sissel and composer Eubie Blake had also long been a showbiz duo. When the foursome met at an NAACP benefit in 1917, they agreed to write a musical together. This project became the revolutionary Black musical, Shuffle Along. Shuffle Along was the culmination of work the foursome had already created over the years, plus a few added scenes and numbers to create cohesion. A Blackface slapstick plot expanded from Miller and Lyle's traveling show with music written by Sissel as he traveled and worked with various bands during World War I and Blake as an orchestrator on the home front. Noble Sissel's work especially was inspired by the work of his previous partner, James Reese Europe, who traveled with his European band during the war. Some of the songs in Shuffle Along were orchestrations that Sissel and Europe had created together. Sissel felt it was important to include Europe in his creative process after his collaborator was stabbed and killed by an angry drummer who claimed Europe was frowning at him during performances. When the four surviving artists had pulled together a script from existing sketches and songs, the next step was to find a talented black cast to make the show work. Lottie G was the first casting decision, a friend of Eubie Blake's hired to play the romantic lead, Jesse Williams. The role rocketed her to national stardom. Florence Mills played opposite her as Ruth Little, a modern flapper with no interest in marriage. Ruth's song, I'm Just Simply Full of Jazz, was the most modern in the show, and the popularity of the song influenced the onset of the jazz age in the early 1920s. In 1921, just after opening on Broadway, a very successful Shuffle Along went on tour immediately casting for extras and understudies to travel the country. 15-year-old Josephine Baker auditioned, but was deemed too dark and not cast. However, after she had a successful turn in the musical Blackbirds in Europe, Miller and Lyles reconsidered and cast Josephine Baker in the chorus of the touring company. Shuffle Along became an overnight success, selling out performances across the country even having to turn away hopeful audience members. When it ended its run in July of 1922, it was the longest running musical currently on Broadway, capping at 504 performances. During its run, Shuffle Along became an inextricable part of the early jazz age, with modern dance numbers such as I'm Just Simply Full of Jazz introducing white audiences to the sound. The show's inimitable dancing chorus was also the first of its kind. Previous choruses had stood in the back to sing without any dance moves. Audiences were captivated by the newfangled dances that Corrines were performing, many of which, including the Charleston, caught on in dance halls across the country following the show's premiere. For all the success of the show, though, it was called out for colorism by the actors, with dark-skinned chorus girls relegated to singing from backstage while their lighter-skinned counterparts performed complicated dance routines in front of the audience. This colorism was made even more ridiculous by the fact that the entire cast was performing in blackface. Miller and Lyles claimed that the show was designed to give white people a good impression of black culture, so therefore, they argued, they had to play into the stereotype that white people were used to seeing in black characters. The duo were trying to create work for black artists, they said, and this was how to do it. When the original run of the show ended in 1922, Miller and Lyles left over disagreements about credit with Cecil and Blake. The writer's new show, The Chocolate Dandies, 
received mixed reviews and closed prematurely. Cicel and Blake too attempted another show after ending Shuffle Along, but their replacement, Keep Shufflin', ended abruptly in 1929 with the onset of the Great Depression. Since neither of the four creators experienced much success in the years following Shuffle Along, they attempted a revival in 1932. But when Aubrey Lyles died of previously undiagnosed pulmonary tuberculosis, the plans dried up. He was 48 years old. The following year, Miller, Sissel, and Blake attempted another revival in Lyles' memory, but Shuffle Along of 1933 bombed with audiences largely due to a growing consensus that black-faced humor was racist and outdated. The show continued off and on for the next decade or so, with various lukewarm revivals and reviews that never managed to recapture the magic of the original 1921 production. Then, Harry Truman used a song from the show, I'm Just Wild About Harry, for his 1948 presidential campaign. Renewed interest in the show led the three surviving creators to attempt another revival, Shuffle Along, of 1952. The revival netted huge star Pearl Bailey, who disliked the blackface humor and the lack of songs for her character. Against the wishes of the original creators, the book was rewritten to expand Bailey's part and to give her more songs. The new songs were written by a white composer without UB Blake's knowledge or permission. Blake was furious. The revival was panned, and the show closed early. It was the last time UB Blake, Flournoy Miller, and Noble Sissel would ever see their work on a Broadway stage. Flournoy Miller passed away in 1971. Noble Sissel died in 1975 after losing most of his memory to dementia. UB Blake was the only one of the original four creators to live to see the revival of the Black Broadway musical when Dreamgirls debuted in 1981. He died two years later. Shuffle Along was never again staged in its original form. A 2015 revival chose to focus on the behind-the-scenes story rather than staging the production itself. The 21st century version also chose to omit the blackface and skirt most of the outdated racist humor. Although much of the show had to be changed, star Audra McDonald noted the importance of Shuffle Along in creating opportunities for black creatives and performers on Broadway in the modern era. While Shuffle Along wasn't the first black musical to make it to Broadway, it did have a couple of important firsts. It was the first to be well received by a multiracial audience the first to have an unironic, uncomedic love story between two black characters, and the first to charge the equivalent of a white musical for admission. Although most of the show wouldn't hold up by today's standards, Shuffle Along proved that a black musical with black music, with black artists and black creators could succeed in front of a multiracial audience. Even though its outdated humor and the resistance to modernizing make it difficult to stage in the 21st century, many of the most important black musicals of recent years owe their success to the earlier success of Shuffle Along, the first proof that black artists could succeed, not by assimilating to white art styles, but by breaking the mold. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know what you liked about it in the comment section below. If you didn't enjoy this video, give it a thumbs down. Tell me what I can do to improve. If you're interested in more nerdy history content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about new videos, which I post every other Friday. If you're interested in learning more about Shuffle Along and its creation, or if you just want to fact check me, I've cited my sources in Chicago manual style in the description box below. Check it out. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, those who don't learn from the past are doomed to repeat it. So don't doom yourself. I'll see you next time.